What's going on YouTube? Welcome to a portrait painting tutorial holiday edition. So we are going to be painting. What are we going to be painting today? Hmm. Maybe if you went to the YouTube channel of mine and went to the community section, you would have seen what I wrote that I'd be painting. So uh, a hint would be uh, he's making a list, he's checking it twice, he's going to find out who's been painting or not. Um, so what it is, is going to be this guy that we expect to travel around the world and deliver presents to everyone that's been nice. I mean, like, can you imagine how much work that would be? Can you imagine how tired you would be? You'd be very tired. So... Um, yeah, this is what we would look like after doing all that work. So this is what we're going to create in about 46 minutes of real-time painting. My man has done a lot of work for you all. He has brought me so many gifts as well. Um, Billiard-related things, painted-related things in the past. Great guy. So, that's what we're going to do, and we're going to get started with that right now. So, let's run the footage. Does it even work? There it is. So let's run the footage. Now this is a live stream. This is live. So this is live commentary of a pre-recorded video. So I will be able to answer all your questions. It looks like it's sped up, but trust me, it's not. I, I My hand actually moves that quickly. And all I did was I spread some odorless mineral spirits onto my surface. My surface is an 8 by 10 inch linen that has been oil primed with lead lead paint and toned with gray oil paint so it is a very absorbent surface which is a good thing which is why i like to add a little bit of something on it so that it's not too absorbent so uh hello there let's play butterfinger hello hey there legendary noob yep you guessed it uh butterfinger it's santa claus hey volker hello there so this is the second week, I think, with the new schedule. So again, it's going to be pretty consistent now. At least it should be uh, around 10 a.m., 10, 15 a.m. on Tuesdays, Eastern Daylight Time. So there actually wasn't a reference per se for this one. I used an old Rembrandt for the like three-quarter view of the face, but then quickly diverged. Uh, so I pretty much made up most of this Santa Claus myself. I didn't want to look up like one of those jolly and nice Santa Claus. Ho, ho, ho. Have a wonderful holiday. It's not like that. It's a lot of work, people. We've got a shop for, for everyone. We have to be presentable and happy looking during, during family gatherings. And of course, there's other holidays. So happy holidays to every holiday out there. I'm just honing in on the U.S. But, but yeah, it's... It's a fun time, but it's a stressful time. It's a difficult time, which is why my man over here, he's showing us what it's all about. And that's what we're going to get at. And as you can see, um, the start. The start is get a sense of where things are going to be placed first. And usually I like to go and throw color in, but because I was imagining things, trying to figure out like, what I want this face to look like. I had to start out with, with um, lines because it's easier to work that way. Hey, George Ion, welcome, welcome. Hey, legendary noob. I know I miss being able to do these live streams and a lot of it, I think, I mean, no excuses, but a lot of it was technology, but I do have an upgraded computer now. So you should be seeing this in 1080p. Uh, my internet should be good, uh, although it's giving me a warning for some reason. Uh, it says good connection. I want it to be excellent connection, but my internet should be all right. Um, so uh, I will announce them. I will try to announce these streams and try to promote them a little bit more, along with my online classes and all that stuff. So right now I'm guesstimating where the shadow is going to go because I'm imagining it. This is an imaginative painting. Although, like I said, I did look at a, a Rembrandt for the placement of the head and all that stuff. 
But the shadow is a little different from the Rembrandt because Rembrandt usually has three quarter, um, three quarter shadows, and the Rembrandt didn't have glasses. So um, I decided to kind of hint at some circular glasses that I would eventually start to put in there. And I'm just drawing with raw umber. The color palette uh, should be listed in the description box of this video, which is kind of weird because I usually make these links for the live streams like day of. This one was like last week. So last week was a long time ago. But if uh, you're interested in what the colors are, I will uh, read them out for you. Uh, hey, Christine. Welcome, welcome. Now we got a little circle there for the hat. So I had to figure out where I wanted the the hat to be. I think I had I have a hat somewhere. At least I should. I should have wore it. But I don't know where it is. Um, so maybe next time I will uh, wear a hat. Or if you really want me to, I'll go looking for it. Um, I think it's in the bedroom somewhere behind me. Uh, so uh, we have drawn out with raw umber our guesstimation of where the face is going to fit and roughly the likeness of the face. And now um, I'm going to use up as much of the raw umber as I can. And we're going to start to fill in some of the darks surrounding the face. So um, as a holiday special, I still say that I will narrate it for you. So again, I'm pretty much just trying to use up my raw umber so it doesn't go to waste. I'm figuring out how long I want the beard to be. So figure um santa claus does a lot of work for us so his beard should be pretty long and i decided to lower the whatever the white part of the of the santa claus hat so i wouldn't have to paint so much forehead so i lowered that a little bit and now we're going to go into a skin color which is white that white is gamblin flake white replacement cadmium orange and that is ultramarine blue a legendary noob usually paint in layers last week you tried ala prima most of it went horribly don't know how you do it so flawless oh thank you it's not flawless at all uh, i usually say that i'm like struggling with grace uh when i'm painting um but it is uh it is a lot of working with shapes rather than lines uh ala prima is more I, even though you see a lot of lines here ala prima is more about working with shapes painting in general is typically working with shapes but it is harder i will say it is harder um on mondays my online students are going to be focusing we're going to be focusing on begin like super beginner level um uh drawing and painting Fridays are going to be more intermediate to to advanced. So on Monday, I uh, I tackled that very problem and um, showed kind of like a system of drawing with a sight size that's more simple than I had done before. So kind of like in the style of Nelson Shanks and Robert Liberace, um, this is kind of like a dual tone right now. And I'm playing it really safe in the start of this one, which is uh, why I'm working kind of in a duotone, which duotone is a misnomer for a two-tone thing. This is not going to be two tones. It's already not two tones um, because the nose is a little bit darker. What, what this means is that I'm working with limited color and I'm figuring out the face, uh, figuring out the structure of the face right now. Um, this is playing it safe because I usually just go right in with color and then start to kind of sculpt it, which is harder than this. Because I knew that most of the structure would be right around here. The hat would be more or less guesstimated and the beard would be much simpler than the face. Then I knew that I would have to go in and apply more structure anyway onto the forehead and the nose. So that's the thought process behind it. Simple light and shadow. Let's see where we go.
And I say holiday edition because next week I think is going to be, yeah, next week is going to be the 27th. So it's going to be in between the 25th and the 31st. So now we're going in with something dark, which is probably, what is that? That is green and alizarin. The green that I'm using is a mix between ultramarine blue and cadmium yellow for all intents and purposes. It should be viridian, but you probably is too lazy to go to the store and get more viridian. Viridian is my favorite green to use. Uh, and I've used many different types of green colored oil paints, but viridian is my favorite. So we've got white and red and alizarin more white and feel free to ask any questions i mean it's not like this was already filmed actually yesterday so i'm very open to any art related questions you may have and now we're feeling in kind of like a dark purplish uh plain change underneath of the nose And the main triangle is the biggest thing to focus on right now. There, I'm, I'm actually editing his nose a little bit. I'm giving him slightly um, an indented nose, um, kind of like kind of like mine. I think I hit my nose on a bicycle when I was a kid or something. I don't know how, or maybe my nose structure is like that. But but I want him to look a little bit on the rougher side. You see his nose there. It looks like he got into a, a little fight with Rudolph. Rudolph probably kicked them a little bit uh, in, in between the eyes at one point. And he probably got a lot of like a lot of wind damage because I don't think his sleigh has a windshield. So he, he's got a lot of like turbulence, that stuff that smacked into his face. So that's what I was going for at that point. Um, and I, I was making it up as I was going. I wanted it to be more like, like this rough and tough Santa that's that's been through that's been through some things to uh, deliver these presents and um, won't even get started with with um, work in the North Pole that he's had to deal with. Upper level management and all that stuff. You know how that goes. So now we're adding a plain change right above the eyebrow. Uh, and we're giving him more of this like serious look. That right there, everyone, right? That right there is one of the biggest areas uh, if you want to give someone more of a serious look, if you want them to have more of a chill, kind of like relaxed look, which will will lessen the serious look later on, but you um, you underplay that that um, structure over there. And speaking of structure, last week you mentioned that you wanted me to talk about structure and anatomy more, so we can do that with with. Uh, Mr. Santa Claus here, because that is the frontal ridge of the skull right here, right above the glabella, which is right over here, which is right underneath of the root of the nose. That plane break is right where the line is for the glasses in between the eyes. So I'm looking at that structure. There is a, uh, a swoop right across the eye socket right here where I put in a bright light, though it's not that easy to see. For the superciliary arch right there, just think of it as like a curved gutter. Uh, and this is the roof of our head. This is like a curved gutter. And you follow it all around to the other side. And you can see it. it's pretty much just a raw umber brush stroke, but there is a notation of it there. A little bit of light underneath of the nose. And um, so anyone that's watching this live, my question to you is going to be... My first question I usually ask, where in the world are you if you are watching this live? I am at in Alexandria. No, not Alexandria from The Walking Dead. I am in Alexandria, Virginia. That is where I am. Where in the world are you? And now we're adding an accent underneath of the nose. And it's been about 13 minutes. 
Uh, just under 14 minutes. We've got a lot of stuff going on there. Hey, Biscotti. Good morning. Good morning. Bay Area, California. Whoa, it's early for you over there. I, thanks for watching that early in the morning. What is it, like 7 a.m. over there? Hey, Diane. From Canada. Alberta, Canada. Cool. I once went on a motorcycle trip all the way up to the border between Canada and uh, the U.S. many years ago. So now we're starting to add a little bit of light for his eyelid. And that's probably the most detail I think that I'll put in for the eyelid. Yeah, 7.30 a.m. over there. That's, that is early. I appreciate you being here that early in the morning. Now we're going and we're drawing in more, more accents as we reach the 15 minute. Hey, legendary noob. From the Le Netherlands. Now in terms of the structure. I will say. Almost every single brush stroke. Is in place of something anatomical. So now we're looking at the maxilla right across pretty much between the maxilla of the skull and the cheekbone zygomatic bone that's right here cheekbone maxilla kind of like where your sinuses are let's see zygomatic minor right underneath of the zygomatic major which is the muscle but uh, for all of intents and purposes, underside of the cheekbone. How about that? Underside of the cheekbone. That doesn't really have an anatomical word to it. That's just facial hair. It is in place, though, of the side plane of the orbicularis oris, which is the muzzle of the mouth, which is covered because Mr. Santa Claus doesn't shave. He doesn't have the time to shave. He's got so much work he has to do. So um, all of the orbiculars, the mandible is covered. All of that is covered, which is much simpler. If you ever have to paint a Santa Claus, uh, of course you can paint this exact one because I'm gonna post a picture for you on my Instagram. So you're going to have this as a guide to paint along with it if you so choose. So where is everyone? We've got, I think we've got like 20 of us here. Why do I have a warning on my streaming software? What's going on here? One of the streams has an invalid configuration. You lie. That is not true. But anyway, hopefully the internet continues to be good because hopefully it does. So from George, you see, so you're in France. Thanks for watching from France. I'm originally from Beltsville, Maryland, but now I'm in Alexandria dealing with one of the worst Worst, uh, I don't know, what is it, like top 20 or so? Worst, um, worst traffic in this country, something like that. So I, I stay in a lot. I stay in and paint a lot. The only times I ever really drive is to go to the pool hall. Um, or go grocery shopping and all those necessities. But I don't drive by choice. So now we're filling in more. Okay, so now we're mixing. It's a little hard to see because of the, the words that I put there, but it is white, ultramarine blue, thalo turquoise, cadmium orange to kill off the blue. So, of course, North Pole, right? So we want this to be kind of a cool 
background and there you see i added a little bit of that's cadmium red so cadmium red and ultramarine blue actually brown each other out so i want a dark cool i don't want it to be too cold because that's a little too cliche to have a, a straight blue behind uh behind our santa claus so it is not that uh not that blue And I wish I knew where I put those hats. Hmm. Oh, thank you. Um, uh, yeah, please uh, press the like button, share this video. I'm not very good at promoting myself, as you can tell. Uh, but one of the best things you can do that would be very interactive would be to uh, just write a comment, uh, something you would like to know about this painting process, if anything confuses you. There, I made a decision that um, I don't want his shoulder to be that far down, so I raised it. So I used a, a little bit of red to raise his shoulder. And now we're going with a Lizarin permanent and cadmium red and i'm going to use dioxazine purple right there dioxazine purple as my dark because ultramarine blue wouldn't get as dark as dioxazine purple and uh, purple is on the warmer end of the spectrum for our darker values so it just kind of fits kind of fits our purposes so here we are 20 minutes in and you can see we're pretty much getting there uh, you see side by side with the finished result so now you see how I'm starting to add that dark and a lot of it is just going to be placing that value down value per value trying to relate one area to another this is very much how I would work from a live model if if the real life Santa Claus was right there in front of me um then this is probably how i would be painting uh, i try to keep the method pretty much the same and it looks accelerated but i promise you this is not accelerated uh, i'm just moving about kind of freely a little bit quickly here and now i'm adding uh some dark underneath of the dark is uh is typically easier than the reverse so, uh, let, let's see. Let's get this comments, these uh, comments to be a little bit more fun. So, uh, let's see. What's everyone going to do for the holidays? Um, what's everyone... I know we don't all celebrate the same holiday, of course. Um, so, what are you going to do? I'm, I'm generalizing it to holidays. As I put a brighter highlight across from his eyebrow i'm actually at that point i was deciding to add white hairs to his eyebrows to kind of match with his beard because like i said i pretty much made this up so i had to add a little bit more light there and it's actually not as hard to make up a face as you might think um, because you don't have to worry like zero percent about likeness the only thing you have to worry about is that you don't recreate yourself which is why I busted his nose because my nose is a little busted, but it's not that busted. And uh, I gave him more kind of like droopy eyes. My eyes are not like that. So I made sure not to recreate my likeness with this, which is something you got to watch out for. So what are you going to do for the holidays? Me, what am I going to do? I don't know. I think I'm going to go with my wife's family, like the in-laws, uh, the wife's family. They usually celebrate like on the 24th of um of the month they stay up till like 12 a.m have their own like routines um mainly just socializing with the in-laws families uh in-laws family and then maybe on the 25th i'll see my family but my family typically we celebrate the 25th the wife's family they celebrate the 24th so now we're adding a little bit of warmer color and that was with alizarin permanent to go towards the violet and then cadmium red to go towards the orange 
And I'm deciding to make his nose, I decided to make his nose there a little bit more red because he's cold. Uh, he's traveling around on a sleigh at about like a thousand miles per hour. You imagine Santa Claus delivering all of those presents. He's going at the speed of a jet fighter. Uh, so he's putting those reindeers to work. Um, so you'd imagine he'd get a little bit cold. So that's how it is. It's a little cold. Hey, Canvas Dancer. Thanks for watching from Minnesota. You'll be with the kids and your grandkids if the weather permits. It's currently 20 below. Holy, wow. Uh, 20 below, chills 30 to 40 below. Wow. So we are on some Xmas beer and chillax. Maybe do some CG art. Ooh, I don't know what that means, but the chillaxing part sounds cool. I wish I could have a, a chillaxing uh, holiday, but family makes it so that it's not chillaxing. I doubt any of my family watches this, so I'm free to say that. Except for my cousins on my father's side. They're like my best friends, basically. Uh, so they make everything cool. Biscotti Christmas at your aunt's house. Sounds good. Sounds good. Hey, Bean Pot. Happy holidays to you as well. Now we're adding white to the uh, hat, which is actually still the gray of the canvas. So it gives us a little bit of control. Hey, I don't know how to pronounce your name. Thanks for watching from the Netherlands. Happy to have you here. So now we're adding a little bit of dark and we're actually behind my tree. Uh, is this even dry? It's dry enough. We're actually behind our Christmas tree. My wife and I, we, uh, we painted some um, Christmas ornaments with uh, billiard balls and uh, a little note to everyone. Don't paint these with oil paint. Um, I was too lazy to go buy acrylic paint. This is one of the few times I would suggest that you actually go and buy acrylics. Um, not to hate on acrylics, but uh, this is one of the only times that I'll actually use acrylics as for things like this. My my wife did this one, the nine ball, uh, which is the one I always miss when I when I'm playing nine ball. Uh, hey Anne, thanks for watching from England. Hey, Leon, let's see, uh, Christmas beer and CG, oh, computer graphics. You do a lot of pre-visuals before painting. Oh, cool, cool. Hey, Bean Pot, oh, good, I'm glad you like the, the theme for the Christmas ornaments. Diane, it's minus 25, what? Minus 25 Fahrenheit in Alberta. So you'll keep close to the fireplace. Wow. That is cold. I don't even know what the temperature is here. What's the temperature outside? It's 36 degrees outside. So not quite that cold. It's 36 Fahrenheit. So it's above freezing. So, uh, and this is my first time in many years to have central heating. So it's like, wow. Such a luxury. <laughs> To have central heating so now i'm curving the structure around the uh the, the uh, holiday hat that he's wearing and i'm trying to make that look a little rough too because remember if if this dude is flying around and giving everyone christmas gifts around the world then he's going at the speed probably like like an f1 fighter uh, i don't know probably faster than the speed of sound so whatever he's wearing is, is taking a beating uh and i always refer to this because it was my one of my favorite tv shows growing up um uh, but i think if i think if, if santa claus was to really be delivering all of those gifts he'd, he'd be like uh let's just say like like a a, a super saiyan santa claus 
to be going that fast and doing that much um, that much work. Anyone that catches that reference, you are awesome. Maybe that should be the next one. A Super Saiyan Santa Claus. It's not a bad idea. Probably get some copyright problems. Uh, so now we're putting in... What are we doing here? Uh, this is a larger brush. And though you can't see it, I'll show you it on the finished painting. I'm carving around the top of uh i'm carving around the top of the hat right there because i had it a, a little too tall like i said i made it up so i had it a little bit too tall alien yeah yeah he's probably faster than a fighter jet yeah i'm telling you yeah <laughs> being fine and it just has to have amazon deliver everything uh, they should have Santa Claus Prime, so it would, you would get everything much faster. Speaking of which, um, speaking of holidays, what's your favorite holiday uh, movie? This one is mine. My favorite is Bad Santa. Uh, that, that's my favorite, uh, the first one. That's my favorite uh, holiday movie. What's everyone's favorite holiday movie? And now we're throwing in some plain changes for the eye socket, keeping it to a minimal, keeping it a little bit warm, right underneath of the eye socket there. And do you recall that long ago that used to be a shadow? Well, I had forgotten that. Um, so now I'm actually going back in and making it a little bit darker. Like I said, I made it up as I was going. So light and shadow was a little bit, nah. It was a little bit uh wish washy there hey rob cp welcome welcome so question to everyone not so much art related but this is a holiday special so what's your favorite holiday movie what's your favorite holiday movie i'll even type it down What's your favorite holiday movie? Uh, so Bean Pot, you like a Christmas story? Rob CP, Scrooge is your favorite Xmas film. I can be known as a Scrooge myself. And the dark plane underneath of the nose. Oh my goodness, man, my heart goes out to all of you that work in retail stores. Or uh, areas like that where they're playing non-stop Christmas music on repeat. No. I was sitting in an IHOP with my wife like on the weekend. Non-stop Christmas music. Oh my goodness. They were... Ah! My hair was like... ah, I, I was just losing my mind. Um, I cannot do Christmas... Long... I, I can do like a Christmas song or two, but not like on repeat for like a long time. And just watching the Railway Children. Oh, cool. I don't know if I've, if I've seen that one. Then again, there's a lot of movies, like a lot, that I haven't seen. A little bit more warmth for his cheekbone. I actually made him a little bit wider. And I think we're pretty far along now. We've got only 13 minutes left on this Santa Claus. Like, like I said, I was making him look like he was doing all that work. And for the uh, temporal parietal region of his skull, which is like right across here, I put a bit more of a plane change. Hey, Biscotti. Yeah, it's hard to be bad, Santa. Yeah. I'm with you there. Uh, Rob CP. Yeah, I've done a lot of bar drawings. Um, yeah, bar drawings in the past. It would be funny, though, to do some bar drawing templates uh make some custom ones like make a bad santa one that, that would be pretty funny um as, as you see I, I tend to take art towards a sense of humor uh most of the time when i get the uh, chance to i can't do that so much when i'm doing a commission um which i do have a big commission that uh i got like a not that long ago and i have to keep i'm in the middle of preparing the canvas so i have to yeah um, so luckily for me, I have had some commissions, 
Uh, and now I'm putting in the light, like I said, on his on his um, eyebrow. But I'm still keeping that kind of like tired out look with the uh, frontal ridge of the skull. Just a like little dot or so, just for the light of the hair. Hey, Leon, let's see. Elf and the Night Before. Another one I haven't seen. I gotta see those. Hey, Christopher. I can't believe how fast this painting went. And there, just for some character, I added that. And that actually remains for the, for the end. There you see the end result. That actually remains. That little brush stroke right underneath of the ear. So Rob CP, you did your first bar drawing off the first foot in the book, but wasn't accurate, so you're trying again. Um, the bargs really do, uh, they require a lot of time and a lot of patience, but definitely a worth, uh, worth doing it. Christopher, oh, Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special. Yeah, I actually just saw that one with my wife. Uh, that was pretty cool. Uh, the main theme was kind of Kind of involved some kidnapping, but it was a pretty cool movie, I will say. I like the, uh, I definitely liked the, some of the scenes that were more when they were throwing cars and things like that. that was, I don't want to spoil it, but that was pretty funny for me. The orange pigment. So right next to, uh, right where, like, uh, there, that one, that's cadmium orange. This one right here, that one is cadmium red vermilion uh, but i would recommend you just get cadmium red uh, medium from gamblin and just cadmium orange from gamblin or uh, cadmium uh, cadmium orange from winsor newton basically winsor newton or gamblin those are like my go-to's these days and i decided to add those kind of darker thick frames and the cast shadow, whoops, the cast shadow underneath of the the frame of the glasses and right there underneath. I've done enough self-portraits because I wear glasses. I know that there's typically a shadow underneath of there. Uh, I couldn't tell you if it's PO20. I'd have to actually go and look at it. But um, it's just, it's the standard cadmium orange tube from uh, Camblin, I believe. It's either Gamblin or Winsor Newton. But if you really want to know, I'll go look for it. Uh, it. I mean, my paint box is right next to me. And now I'm adding more light across the uh, the frame of the glasses. Since you're that specific with the pigment number, I'll go get my paint box. Hey, Jonas. I'm still here, everyone. Don't worry, you can't see me, but I'm here. Okay, I'm looking for my cadmium orange. So we got a very specific question about it. Um, so, where is my cadmium orange? As you see, I need to buy more of it. Um, but actually, this one's Winsor Newton, cadmium orange. And this is PO20. Yeah, yeah, this is PO20 or PR108 um, or PR108. So you're right. It's that PO20. I didn't even know that was a thing, but um, P I usually go by PR. So PR108 is what we have there. Um So, uh, let's see. Hey there, Larinano. I don't know how to pronounce your name. Uh, welcome. Thanks for watching from Argentina. Let's see, Jonas. Welcome, welcome. Thanks for the holiday greetings. 
Hey, Leon. Oh, no worries. I mean, my, my setup is like four feet next to me, so it's okay. Uh, I'm in a pretty small apartment, which is more comfortable. It's actually very comfortable. Hey, Christopher, you ordered Paul Rubens Alkid because the price is, is the highest you can go. You've seen my video. Do you think the paint brand is still good? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, mean, I still have some of them in my... I still use them. Uh, here's the proof. I mean, it's in my palette box. I still use it. Um, they do dry pretty quickly. So if you want to like slow them down a little bit, you can use some um, walnut oil and it'll slow them down almost to the same speed as like regular oil paint. So they, they are pretty good. I will say I, I still use them. Oh, thank you, Jonas. So Leon PR108, you use cadmium reds as well. Oh yeah, they're very, very good tinting strength. Although I still want to try the genuine vermilion. Let's see where we are on the time. So we've got like six minutes left and I won't end, like I won't leave as soon as the footage ends. Like we can still talk a little bit about what happened in the painting. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, definitely. If you like this, please like this video and help share it to everyone. So from Neeks, let's see, you said, I know there really isn't a quick way to learn anatomy, but in your opinion, what's the best source to learn it from? Is there a book slash DVD where you can uh, recommend? So uh, how I was taught anatomy, specifically like for the face, if we're talking about the face, the figure is a different story. Uh, when you're trying to learn anatomy from the, the human figure, the best thing is really life drawing. Uh, and having some good books, like the Bridgman book is a good one. Um, Bridgman. I don't actually know how to spell it. Bridgman? Bridge. Let me see here. Bridgman Anatomy book. Here's what I found. Let's see. George Bridgman Constructive Anatomy. Wow, that's an old one. Really old one. Uh, but I literally just asked Siri and it uh it gave me a book. Kind of funny. I didn't think I could do that, but it gave me a, it gave me a book, Constructive Anatomy. So and there you go, completely for free. Uh, so ask Siri if you have Siri or just ask your smartphone or the Bridgman and it'll show up. There you go. Um, that's a really good one. I can't believe you can just get it for free like that. That's pretty cool. Um, that's what that's the go to, I think, like the standard for most people uh, for books. So um, do those studies, those little Bridgman drawings of like torsos and things and then apply it to life drawing life drawing is one of the best ways you can learn anatomy of the human figure anatomy of the face also there's another book um john de martin of course i can't forget that um john de martin is a published author and he's also he was also my teacher um and then we have another anatomy for artists. John DeMartin, you can, I think you can find that one on Amazon. Uh, but that's another good one to, to look at for anatomy. Anatomy of the face, though, is more simple. That one you can learn, like, really fast. That one is way more simple um, than the anatomy of the, uh, of, the, of the human body. That's a little bit more complicated. But for anatomy of the face, uh, just look at the planes, like the plane heads, uh, and know that every situation is different. Like anatomy is only useful to place the parts. And even so, with what we have here, I can explain the anatomy on the face. We've got three minutes. Once it ends, I will pause it, and I will explain everything anatomical. Um, so at least everything that related to Santa Claus is anatomy. So now what we're going to do is uh, we're just going to sign it. And I think this is uh, with a size 4, actually I know this is, a size 4 silver brush 
pure red sable with dioxazine purple and ultramarine blue and alizarin thinned out with orderless mineral spirits so this one along with all my other 8x10s that you're seeing here will eventually all be for sale so that's why i'm trying to um sign all of them and this might be the last one maybe i don't know this might be the last one that i signed 2022 because 2023 is very close by so um let's see now that the that this is almost over my last question for everyone is what would you like me to talk about next time next tuesday What subject matter would you like me to cover next Tuesday? And as always, if you want to take your art education with me further, please check out my online classes, which should also be linked in the description box of this video. Which, by the way, um, like I said, we are doing lessons now. Uh, beginner, absolute beginner lessons Mondays, intermediate to advanced on Fridays. And there I'm using a fan brush because I'm getting ready to photograph this uh, this uh, Santa Claus. And uh, that helped me to minimize the glare because the camera is on the top left side. Not the camera. The light is on the top left side. Uh, so that would create glare on that. Um, so Jonas, expression lines. Okay, expression lines. You mean like expression like happy sad kind of expression is that what you mean by expression lines and composition okay and composition okay so let's see i think there we go only 30 seconds left so that is we're going to pause it there so there it is that's the ending as you see when we whoops when we um let me get that back in the right spot mm, i think that's correct so when we um, photographed it, you see that it's a little bit lighter on the right side. But there you go. That is how that happened. Um, and I usually do this little synopsis. So first, there was nothing. We started with nothing. Mineral spirits. Throw in some shapes with raw umber and guesstimate it. See how there was a shadow there in the beginning? Duotone, so we laid down some color and we started to create some form. And bam, now we have some dark in the background, dark for the, um, the hat, and then a little bit of subtlety, not that much, for the hat and the face. And then kapow, then we had the glasses and then more subtlety and then we signed it and there you go so that's how we ended up with that and this is the santa claus that's been through the struggle this is the santa claus that goes faster than an f1 fighter this is the santa claus that um the, the real santa claus that goes through the struggle of delivering all those packages santa claus prime is what this is uh, Christopher having issue with likeness. So likeness is another one. Oh, DM, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for the um, the uh, super chat. That means so much to me. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you uh, for the uh, the Christmas super chat. Thank you. That means so much to me. Uh, thank you so much, DM. From Jonas, uh, so you said yes, like the smile lines and the one on the forehead. Okay, um, so so expression, uh, so expression, composition. We've got likeness. Uh, let's see. From Nix, why you choose the colors on your palette as opposed to others? Example: Why cadmium red instead of vermilion? Oh, that's a good one. My um, palette, and let's move the chat box for a second. Um, so you can see the colors. So we've got titan uh, not titan that's um, flake white replacement, cadmium yellow, Indian yellow, cadmium orange, cadmium red, 
Alizarin Crimson, that should be Viridian, Ultramarine, Thalo Turquoise, Dioxazine Purple. That is my go-to palette. It is a big palette condensed into a smaller one, which is why there are no um, there are no earth colors on there because it's I get a broader range if I neutralize. For example, like you talk you talk about Vermilion. I wish I had it. It's just more expensive. That's why I don't have it. But I can also neutralize cadmium red a little bit with green. Gives me kind of like an earthier red, which should approximate vermilion at least. But it won't get the texture or the, the thickness and the body that you get from a genuine vermilion, from what I hear. Hi, hey, Stephanie Thompson. It's great to have you back. So this is the new schedule now that I have moved into my own place with my wife, um, just so I don't, you know, like live stream while she's trying to eat dinner or something um because kitchen's in front of me living room's next to me along with the studio bedroom's there and that's it which is great it's actually very comfortable uh let's see from leon i don't have any topic ideas but i wish you a happy holidays oh thank you thank you leon oh, i'm glad that you enjoy these videos i'm glad <laughs> christopher this santa is more believable santa prime yep santa prime uh, absolutely very, very busy Santa. Been through the struggle. Oh, another super chat. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. You are all too kind. You are too kind. Thank you so much for the super chat. Uh, Stephanie Thompson, too kind. Thank you, thank you so much. I'm so glad that you enjoy these videos. And uh, again, yes, thank you so much for the, the super chat. Uh, Neeks, so when working on a painting commission, how often should you update your um, your client? So honestly, it depends on the client. It really does. If you've got um, a more kind of like relaxed client, um, more friendly, more knowledgeable of the arts, you can update them more because they are, you know, they're more understanding. If you've got a client that's like, it must look like this. Uh, update them when it is at its best. When you have pretty close to finished. And it's just last minute. So uh, if they're very picky, update them closer to the end. Making sure that you have done everything that they asked. Um, if they're more understanding of how art actually works then you can update them more regularly because they're much more uh much more understanding so uh guava where's the cat it is in my wife's uh the grumpy cat is at my wife's office i kind of stopped doing the grumpy cat because i was afraid of a uh, of a uh, copyright uh, copyright issues so um but yeah the, the cat is safe cat is safe um, Kat is at my wife's office. Yep, happy holidays, everyone. I think everyone should do something like this. Um, paint some ornaments. I suggest you all paint some ornaments. If you haven't done so, this is a great activity to do with the family. Maybe I'll post these on the Facebook group for viewers of these live streams. So from Christopher, you know someone who did a commission and the client wanted to see the painting, but it was still in its, uh, let's see, let's just say um, difficult phase. Client almost canceled. Yeah, be very careful of that because typically clients do not understand that a painting is unfinished before it's finished. So be very careful of that, everyone. So legendary noob, would would uh, what would a good exercise be to develop color mixing skill? Uh, you use online tools to pick colors, but don't want it to be a crutch to rely on too much. Uh, my best advice for you is to do okay. So number one, is your palette consistent? Keep your palette consistent. Uh, you'll always notice that my palette is the same now, especially since I left that little this box here. Because there's really nothing in this box. It's not blocking any colors. This is my go-to palette. Uh, it's 
the same palette all the time. So first tip for that, is keep your palette consistent. Second is to paint very simple still life under different light conditions and paint them quickly. Paint them quickly and in different light conditions. But that is something we could do as well for uh, future videos. I think I, I don't know if I talked about color as much last time. So Nix, you've heard that using colored pencils for graphite or graphite is not archival, but you've always heard people say that it's fine. What's your opinion? I think it's fine as long as you use very light lines. Like if you start heavily shading graphite, then probably not that archival. But if you just use it to just gently draw, um, it should be fine. Like for example, like my online students will show you. So um, someone asked if I'm still using the uh, those uh, Paul Rubens Alkids, and I, I used it for this. So this is the Monday project that we started with the online classes. I actually created a custom grid using charcoal for um, a line for, uh, we did it side size for the eyes, the uh, forehead, the nose, the mouth, all horizontals, all verticals, um, all in charcoal, outline all in charcoal. And there's actually still some charcoal here Notice how it comes off. There's still some charcoal there, so you can do that. It's not going to harm it as long as it's just um, uh, a little bit and you're not heavily shading it. So, Leon, oh, good. I'm glad you liked that advice. Um, yeah, yeah, some clients can't imagine the final result, so you got to be careful with that. you very careful with that. So Rob CP, you've seen a video, an artist said that if you want to do quick studies or are just learning what oil paints do, uh, can you use wallpaper, lining paper? Honestly, I would just, uh, though it, it, the upfront cost is going to be a little bit more, anyone that's just learning, just, just buy a roll of cotton canvas. Uh, they're pretty inexpensive in the long run. I still have mine, like a big one across from me that I bought years ago. Those are perfect for studies because cotton is not that expensive. Um, and sometimes it's actually more reliable than linen, and I hate to say it, but um, uh, that would be the best because you, all you have to do is just cut it into little pieces. Um, not the whole thing, but just small sections of it. That's better than anything else, really, uh, because you're painting on actual on an actual like like cotton or linen. You're painting on cotton, and it is, um, I'd just say it's much more worth the money. Hey, Rob, CP, I don't know about those color pencils. Oh, I'm glad you like the tips, Legendary Noob. Neeks, why do you have cadmium orange on your palette when you could mix your orange with the yellow and red? Oh, don't worry about the questions. Don't worry about the questions. That helps me. The question, the comments actually helps to promote these videos. Uh, cadmium orange, I have it there because it's a lot of work for me to go and mix uh, yellow and red. You're right, I don't really need it there, but it's more of a convenience. It's the same with the green, it's a convenience. Um, I actually did mix ultramarine blue and cadmium yellow with a palette knife separately and put it there. But viridian is much more of a convenience, and it is a little different. Um, just as cadmium orange is a little different. It's more pigmented, I think, than if I were to mix cadmium yellow and cadmium red. But yeah, more for the convenience. So it looks like a lot of the questions, uh, suggestions for the next video for me to focus on is about um, expression and color expression and color
And again, thanks so much for the super chat. I mean, this is the, this is the most like generous super chat like I've ever had, like ever. I wish I had my Santa hat. Um, I, I would wear it for you, but I don't know where it is. Uh, I do paint landscapes and still lives. I do. It's just I tend not to do so well on on YouTube. Um, I just don't gather as much. There's just not as much interest in people seeing me doing landscapes uh, or still lives. But I do do them. I do. Uh, in fact, the commission I just did uh, was a, of an eagle. Uh, I painted an eagle, which I can't show because um, the client's going to use it for... Um, for a logo so um i can't that's one painting i actually can't show uh for legal reasons but yes i do do landscapes and and still lives while everyone's here still here i think i know where my christmas hat is i'm gonna go find it And I found it. Um, so this is the uh, Christmas hat. So I'm actually going to be taking pictures with my wife in front of that tree um, soon because it's our first Christmas uh, living together um, in a place of our own. So I've got my little holiday hat here. Um, so yes, ho, ho, ho. Merry Holidays is what I will say. So from Leon, let's see, you like the question. Uh, it can vary. It can vary a lot with limited palettes. Sure. Um, the reason why I have my palette this way, yeah. So it looks like expression, likeness, and color are the main questions for next week so this is good so during these streams remember these are going to be tuesday mornings 10 10 15 a.m eastern daylight time so uh let me know what you want me to talk about and let me know what you want me to title the video so it can help like generate more views and stuff like that so um yeah we'll talk about that next time i'll make a note of it now so likeness expression I'm making a note of it on my phone expression lines you said and color palette and the color palette so cool I will Focus on these topics next time, and I will um, title my video based on these uh, these suggestions. Oh yeah, consistency of the color is a factor. It is a big one. Okay. So it looks like we have answered all the questions. And again, uh, thank you so much for the the super chat, uh, DM and Stephanie Thompson. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, it really, really helps us out so much. And I will create the link for these videos. I will start creating these uh, links earlier. So you'll have an update like days before I go live. Hi, hey, Frentis. Thanks for watching from Denmark. Um, yeah, the, the stream, unfortunately, I have to do it around this time because it's just, it's the most convenient time for me because right after this, I'm going to be doing a Zoom session with my uh, 
online students in the Zoom tiers. And then later on today, um, my wife comes back home from work. Oh, thank you, Christopher. Well, thank you for existing as well. Yep, happy holidays to everyone. All right, so this is me officially signing out. Thank you so much, and thank you so much, everyone, for attending this holiday special. And uh, we will be here consistently on Tuesdays. If you're interested, of course, in taking your online art education with me further, please check out the link to my online classes on my Patreon, which is in the description box of this video. Okay, no worries, Frentis. I'm glad that uh, the schedule works out for you. So once again, thanks so much, everyone. Uh, and uh, please pay attention to my um, community section. I guess that came out a little mean. Um, sorry if that came out a little mean, but uh, please check out my uh, community section on my YouTube channel. That's where I will be posting, uh, like, giving you updates about uh, what I'm going to be painting specifically. Um, that's going to be in the community section of my uh, YouTube uh, channel. But again, I will be posting the link and uh, creating this stream post. I guess that's what it's called but ahead of time. But no, it will be consistently on Tuesdays, this, this kind of format. Uh, so who knows? Maybe next time, you know, next time will be the 27th. Maybe it will be a New Year special. Hmm. Maybe that's an idea right there. It'll be a New Year's special. So uh, thank you so much, everyone. I wish you all the very best in all of your artworks. I wish you all happy holidays. And I will see you all on the next one.